Ok. Are you? Yes. Are you ready? We're just starting. So just making sure that uh, for those on Zoom, uh, your microphone is on mute, just so that it doesn't make extra noise yeah. that resonates. We, yeah, we, we're going to join a few people coming. Hello. Okay, all right, let's get started with this yoga for back pain. So, good to see you all. Uh, that's it, we're all set. So today, for this class, you might need uh, maybe a block or a cushion. If you need for sitting, probably, I think, definitely a blanket because it's a little bit cold today in Melbourne, this morning. And anyway, it's always a good thing to have for the end relaxation so you can start we'll start with our traditional little um, meditation or connection so coming into your sacred space your mat so you can use your block if you're sitting in Vajrasana on your knees and this is a little bit too much you have maybe so especially if you have back issues things you know you know sort of niggly lower back hips uh, or even maybe middle back shoulder blades, it's maybe a little bit hard to sit straight. Uh, if you're still at this stage, you might need the block, otherwise maybe no block, just resting nice and straight. So as, as I always mentioned, <coughs> Vajrasana, unless obviously you have knee ankle issues, it's very good to keep the spine straight. Uh, also, it works on the legs, makes the legs actually supple. Uh, even if at the start, in terms of uh, knee and ankle joints, it feels like it's maybe a little bit too harsh, like it's painful. Uh, it actually really works on making them supple. Uh, there's a, an initial period of time where you might be struggling with it, especially when at the start you feel it's painful and you don't really want to get into it and um, not often enough, like not every day and not long enough because you just come out of it because it's just too painful. Uh, but if you keep at it, I had exactly the same problem. You know, I was, uh, I've had knee issues. My, I did my ankle so many times, you know, playing around when I was a kid already and other crazy sports. Um, but when you stay at it, then, you know, can stay an hour, half an hour, whatever it's, uh, and it feels really good. But again, at the start, maybe to help get that, um, those joints supple and, ease into it, you might be using a block, placing it maybe this way under your sacrum or if you just prefer to take a normal cross leg position, if you have knee ankle issues, you can use a blanket, the block also, maybe putting the blanket on top of the block, if you want to stay into an easy cross legged position, that way you have a good straight spine. So ideally, this helps to elevate your hips so that your knees are not higher than your hips because otherwise, if you're holding sort of like this, you're just trying, trying to relax. So if you try to relax, that's, it probably means you're not relaxed really <laughs> because you're just trying, as in trying to have. So you really want to have those legs relaxed because when those legs are relaxed, your hips are relaxed lower back is more relaxed and you can have a nice straight posture. Alright, so we'll start with our traditional uh, pranayama, a few things for a yoga for back pain class. So we're not going to be going into anything too crazy uh, today. We've got uh, a new moon coming 
tomorrow morning, uh, Saturday, three in Melbourne time, three thirty-eight a.m. Uh, so traditionally, the moon is uh, the new moon. Sorry, is um, it marks the end of the cycle of the moon and the start of a new one. Just like anything in life, there's cycles, uh, especially if we're working with uh, back pain or chronic pains. You might know, um, you might not have worked that out yet, but um, the idea with yoga coming on our sacred space and connecting to our bodies or emotions, everything is to work out what the cycles are maybe, in which you know, you might have these pains coming, easing, recurring, somewhere else come in, uh, if you can just please make sure that you are uh, go on mute with your microphone, thank you. Uh, <coughs> anyway, in terms of feeling better, please just uh, unmute your microphone, uh, mute your microphone please. There's one thing that is very important in respect of the healing sides of yoga and that's why I always start with the Om chanting, so I don't always talk about it, but um, I thought today would be good to have a little talk about it. So the Om chant, when you chant yourself, especially, is very good. Uh, you might have heard and um, know anyway, I think everyone knows, that music is quite healing. Music has that um, ability to really make something resonate within you. And um, really heal, isn't it? So the old chant is very important, uh, and as you might know, or if you don't know me, you'll see uh, my own. I do it the um, <coughs> with the three letters. Uh, hello, sorry, just uh, need to unmute someone's microphone. I don't know who that is. Uh, okay. Thank you, one more, oops, I don't know how this works, All right, I think that's okay, sweet, so we'll start again, sorry about that, so <clears throat> the good thing about the Om Chant is that you have a deep vibration, so I do it with the three letters, A-U-M, not just, um, I find some people do it on a little bit, it's a little bit sort of shy to me, I think, because um, I don't feel it really vibrates much. What you really want with the OM is that deep vibration. This is what's healing because, especially when you chant yourself, you have the vibration, the frequency, all deep within you, so basically each and every cell within your whole body vibrates. Just like, you know, when you listen to bright music and you like, uh, either it's, you know, making you um, go a bit pumping or relaxing so much or just maybe emotional, some music um, bring out tears, maybe because it's bringing out memories or whatever, but you feel that deep vibration, you feel it deep within you, so that's what you want to be looking at doing when you use the OM chant, so that you really connect deep and actually get this deep healing vibration because why do I do the three letters, the three letters and just go quickly through that uh, it is said that these are the primordial, primordial sounds uh, of the universe and that we are actually able to do. Our good friend Sadhguru explains that very well uh, saying that um, <laughs> if you were to remove the tongue all the sounds that you'll be able to do is a mm, mm, which are these three letters of the OM, A, U, A. Uh, all the other sounds are just a mixture of these primordial sounds, so which we do obviously with you know tongue and vocal cords, but um, they represent also it's um, the, the trinum, like there's always uh, a lot of things that come in three, like the most sa stable, uh, you no know, four seat, uh, the three legs, also the trident uh, for Shiva, there's a lot of things like this, and what it represents in terms of 
uh, yoga on consciousness in the yoga is that the A is for um, the um, sleeping state, sorry, waking state, and then the U is for um, deep sleep, and the M is for the highest consciousness, and then you've got also just one extra one that if you want, like, stop after is uh, this, the state of transcendence, when all these sounds unite, so you really reach up when you chant your OM and when it unites um, you have a little pause, you might notice the pause and that's really where you find all that bliss so without further ado we'll get started um, we'll start as usual with a little pranayam Kapalbhati which is the cleansing breath so it helps to really activate uh, the nervous system also because the OM chant has a great effect on the nervous system so it's very important for especially chronic back pain to really get that nervous system balanced, strengthened and relaxed so it works at a really deep level and Kapalbhati will help you to really get into that also obviously cleaning the frontal brain and nasal passages to help you breathe deeper, the breath as usual is always very important, we'll finish with the breath today as well and on the so just quickly show um, Kapalbhati for those who might be new you can place your right hand on top of your left and you want to be relaxing your hands just on your lap so I often see some people keeping it a bit up uh, sort of hunching the shoulders you really want to stay relaxed so the hands can relax on your lap you just keep your pinky finger against your abdomen so that you feel the movement of your abdomen so you'd be using your abdomen bringing your navel using your uh, abdominal muscles so contracting navel in towards the spine as you expel out the nose short sharp exhalations out the nose so just like so so you take a deep inhale spine is nice and straight and then you start pumping so like this so we'll go for let's do today two rounds of 15 to 20, see how you go. If you need to stop at 10, that's fine. You just stop at 10, do normal breathing. If you can push to maybe 15 or even 20, uh, that's good slowly, just no straining. We're doing uh, a slow progression and most importantly, uh, general caution uh, as with any you know, back issue or maybe the lungs, whatever you might feel, uh, dizziness or difference of pressure in the ears. We're just working nice and slow, there's no need to push to be uh, better than the previous day. Actually, just what's important is to notice any differences. So, just do what you can, getting into position, relaxing the breath, so shoulders are nice and relaxed, spine is straight, gaze slightly forward with your eyes closed, and we're getting ready. Taking a deep breath in through the nostrils. Using your abdominals, you can start to get pumping. You've reached 20, relaxing the breath. Just going for a couple of relaxing breath. Again, just doing what you can. See if you can try to really lengthen the exhales and not rush it. Ideally, over time, that's what you want to be doing, as opposed to going quicker. Just to help with the relaxing effects of this pranayam. And we go again. Last round, taking a deep inhale in through the nose. And you get pumping really using the abdominals.
relaxing the breath still with your eyes closed focusing on your internal state physical mental emotional maybe even spiritual we now get going with our own chants so today we'll go for a little bit longer we'll go five five or more rounds we'll see how we go just to try to really connect feel it deeper so again see if you can get into this A so the A really starts as low down into the belly maybe even pelvic floor and as you rise towards the navel you start to change to the letter U they just A and U really join together this is why you have sometimes it's O or M because the A and U maybe is a little bit hard for a lot of people to get but that's really what's important to start with your A to awaken this energies in the body so it works on the nadis deep energy um, pathways related to the nervous system and then as you keep going up you'll feel it really much into the heart so very important to get that vibration at the heart center this also works on the vagus nerve a very important nerve to help relax in the nervous system and then when you get into the head you get to your M when you really get the vibration is start closing your mouth and just getting maybe the lips just a little um, uh, flutter into the lips as they barely touch and you continue expanding out the mouth getting into maybe the crown of the head and beyond so let's get going see what you can do what's important is not how you sound don't worry all the microphones are off so no one can hear you you can just go for your life and just really Focus on the vibration, no, it doesn't matter what sound, it will come later, don't worry about it. So we work with the breath as usual, taking a deep inhale in through the nose and then nice long exhale out the mouth as you chant on. Expanding the air out the nostrils, we're getting ready. Deep inhale in through the nose. round
sitting with the silence, that peace, after the chant. Take a deep breath in through the nostrils, into the chest, out through the nose, in, out. Very gently you can open your eyes and see if you can keep that sense of peace, relaxation in the nervous system all throughout the practice. So we'll start getting into the body to warm up the body. <coughs> So we go again with our traditional Suya Namaskar. Hope I can reach up with the camera, that's good. So we've got a few people here, beautiful. Uh, let's get going. So again, especially if you have chronic back pain, there's no need to go too deep into any of the movements. What's important is to try to keep that sense of peace and really just feeling the body connect with your breath. So breath is nice and deep in the body, in through the nose, out through the nose. So we start with our traditional um, Suya Maskar, actually we do a little bit different today. Since we've got a new moon, maybe a little bit cooler, but you see what you do, we'll add uh, a version of Chandra Namaskar, the uh, moon salutations, because the moon is coming just to try to honor that uh, more calm, fluid energy, uh, but still getting some movement with the breath, and I still chant actually the sun mantras, because we in the morning just trying to awaken the energy. Um, it's very similar anyway, so if you know the sun mantras, Sule Namaskar, you won't have too much of a problem, just a little variation, so you can start with your hands in prayer position at the heart center, just really feeling that grounding, feet anchoring into the earth, maybe feeling slightly a lift, that energy from the earth coming up the bones, you can start to activate the muscles in your pelvic floor, lower abdomen, maybe navel slightly in towards the spine, just to start really activating. There's no need to really tuck the table under too much. A lot of people tell you about tucking the table under, but there's a little bit too much uh, tucking, scooping. Uh, you don't want to be too soft in the abdomen. I think that's what the problem is sometimes. Some people are a bit too soft and maybe over arch, but if you tuck your tailbone, you're actually losing that natural arch in the spine, uh, in the lower back, and that's not too good because you can pinch the nerve, so basically your spine has a natural arch into the lower back, and that's how your vertebrae are actually set. Uh, when you stretch, tuck your tailbone under and you scoop it under, by making it straight, you're compressing at the front of the body so they can be a little bit of an issue. So if you just want to have that natural curve, there's one in the lower back that goes in. Your shoulders are a li little bit rounded, not too much, but you still want to open your shoulders, but there's a natural um, rounding here and another natural curve into your spine. So you really want to try to feel that. We get going with the mantra. Om Nitraya. Nice and slow the inhale, stretching your arms up, look up. So as usual, just doing what you can. We're slowly warming up the body, opening your arms. Slowly as you exhale, you can start to hinge at the hip level. So you can keep your back nice and straight, reaching forward with your fingertips, crown of the head. So trying to extend forward, bending into the knees to protect your lower back at the start until you get warm. So bending as much as needed. <coughs> the more you bend your knees, the easier it becomes. Inhaling your left leg back. So nice, big, giant step far back so that you can drop your knee, point your toes, and you feel a good stretch onto your hip flexor here, also your hamstring. And as you inhale, so these are the Chandra Namaskar Moon Salutations. You're going to reach your arms up, paying attention to this alignment with your spine. Nice and slow as you exhale, you release, planting your hands, tucking your toes under, and we move into Ashtanga position, knees, chest, forehead, so arching into the spine, see if you can keep your hips as high as possible, you start bringing the weight of the body onto your shoulders, bringing your chest, forehead to the floor, 
So the forehead to the floor allows for a nice stretch into the neck and the upper back, which we don't always get. Nice and slow, you release all the way down into your abdomen, pointing your toes, keeping your feet about hip width distance apart. And as you inhale, you can start to lift your heart off, giving that nice arch into the spine using your back muscles. As you exhale, you slowly release, tucking your toes under, pushing onto your hands so you can just really reverse what we did, maybe lifting your hips, pushing onto your hands, stretching your hips back towards the child's pose and you push onto your feet, reaching your hips up for Adhumukha Svanasana, keeping your feet, knees as bent as needed. And then looking forward between your hands, you can step your left leg, left foot right between your hands, <coughs> 90 degree angle into your front knee, so back leg again is Relax, you should get just about the same stretch and as you inhale, you reach your arms up. See if you can keep relaxing your shoulders, keeping your ribs in so your core is nice and engaged so that you lift in the collarbone but at the same time you relax into your shoulders. As you exhale, you release, stepping forward. Right foot to meet the left, back to your forward fold, still bending into your knees as much as you need. Nice and slow, as you inhale, you start. Rolling your spine up vertebrae by vertebrae, so feel that stretch into each disc as you start to come back to a neutral position for the spine, reaching your arms up, palms together, and as you exhale, release, see if you can really feel as the breath comes down, the hands come down, that energy, the grounding, relaxing all the way down to your feet. Om Suryaya Namaha Inhale and go again, stretching your arms up, look up, nice and easy, opening your arms, exhaling out the nose, back is flat as much as possible, still bending into your knees, fingertips to the floor, this time you inhale, right leg back, so we're going to keep switching legs, as usual try to stay into the process, keeping the brain alert, inhaling all the way up. See if you can maybe start sinking your hips down if you feel comfortable, but watch your lower back. So for that, again, ribs in as much as possible. Exhale, you release, planting your hands, stepping back, Chaturanga. Knees, chest, forehead. So again, arching into the spine so stomach doesn't touch, elbows don't touch the floor. Slowly releasing all the way down, you point your toes, inhale. Use your back muscles, maybe you can start lifting a bit higher, maybe still bent into your elbows but relax into the shoulder blades, slowly releasing, tucking your toes under. You can keep pushing through a child's pose, or maybe straight into your down dog as you start to warm up, but really feeling into the back. You don't want to get into any injuries. As you inhale, right leg forward. Again, you drop your back knee, back leg is completely relaxed. Continuing on your inhale, you reach your arms up. Shoulders relaxed, ribs in as you exhale, you release, stepping forward. Maybe still bending into your knees as you inhale, slowly rolling the spine up, paying attention to each and every vertebrae. Exhale, releasing, and we keep going, keeping the awareness to the breath, to the spine. to go a bit deeper, you can start to go a bit deeper, but not too deep, nice and slow, exhale, folding forward, inhaling left leg, so as usual, just do what you can, what's important is that we get into some movement, just paying attention to the alignment, making sure that the breath is nice and soft, deep, exhaling, arching into the spine, so elbows are off the floor, close to the body, releasing all the way down onto your abdomen. As you inhale, you might start to lift all the way up into your full Bhujangasana if you feel ready to straighten your elbows, relax into the shoulders, back is relaxed, maybe looking up, and as you exhale, nice, slow, consciously relax your spine on the floor, pushing onto your hands to stretch back, Adho Svanasana. Inhaling, left foot forward, so again, making sure you have 90 degree angle, Inhaling all the way up, shoulders are relaxed. Exhale. Nice and slow, inhale. And we keep going. 
continuing to warm up the body, warming up all the systems in the body, especially the nervous system. That's fine. Exhale. Knees, chest, forehead. Shoulder blades are relaxed. Inhale. Maybe scooping up into your full bhujanasana. Exhale. Stretching back. Down dog. Inhale. Exhale. Back to your forward fold and you keep going. Nice and squared. Exhale. Going all the way down. Inhale. Rolling your eyes upwards. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Only a few more like this. Keep going. Deep concentration to the breath, the feelings into the body. Um, Sing a namaskar to your heart, hands by your side. You can take a moment to just feel in the body, feeling that breath. So, noticing what you feel in your spine. If you have good balance, you can stay with your eyes closed and slowly come down on your back for a quick shavasana. Just a very quick one, relaxing completely, breathing deeply in through the nose out through the nose, just noticing the sensations in the body. Thank you.
we'll start nice and easy with a good stretch for the back. So again, you do what you can. Open up our nutasan, it's very easy on our back, so you can keep your eyes closed so that we stay connecting to what you feel in your spine, so very important. Bringing your feet together, knees to your chest. We'll just go really easy, so going into easy version, you can just get hold of your knees with your hands and you start pressing your knees towards your chest. What you want is to try to keep your back as flat as possible so you don't get like an over arching into um, your lower back but really trying to keep your hips down as much as possible otherwise you're going to get into uh, a rounding of the back if you lift your hips which is not exactly what we want we're trying to feel a stretch into the spine so as you keep your hips down the spine is getting stretched tailbone forward and you want to be lengthening into your head so shoulders are relaxed. If you can go further without losing that stretch, the hips down, maybe just lifting your head, getting hold of your elbows, but then relaxing your head back down and you should be able to keep pushing your hips down so that you feel like the tailbone is getting pushed to the front of the mat and you really feel that lengthening into the whole spine with your shoulders still relaxed. Neck is long, and we're staying there for a few breaths. So breath as usual is still deep, in through the nose, out through the nose. So this really works on the nervous system as we stretch the spine and you breathe deeply, massaging the abdominal organs, getting into the nervous system. On your next breath out, you can lift your head up and see if you can bring the bridge of your nose between your knees, your eye sockets, to touch maybe your knees if you can, using your upper back strength. So you can do so a bit more as you exhale. So as you exhale, your navel goes in towards the spine, a bit more room gets created into your abdomen to curl a bit further. Still breathing deeply in through the nose, out through the nose. One more breath. Nice and slow as you exhale, you release. Head down, releasing the grip of your hands, stretching your legs forward. Oh, just taking a few breaths like this, really feeling around the hips, particularly inside the hips, lower back. So this was a good stretch for the lower back actually quite similar to Balasana child's pose. And we're going into a similar pose Dvipada Shirkonasana where you bring the sole of the feet together. So again you might need to lift your head up to get hold of your feet. See if you can interlace your fingers and you want to try to keep the sole of the feet together as much as possible. So really feet flat and then you start pulling your feet towards your head once you've got the whole of your feet you want to again relax your head down so neck is long shoulders are relaxed so you don't want to be hunched like this as much as possible um, might not be possible at the start but that's okay just work towards it and as you press your feet together see if you can keep your heels as low as possible close to your perineum region and pressing your feet together, you should start to feel an opening into your hips as your knees move out as much as possible, but again, watching your knees, this might be a bit strong if you have knee issues, but if you're into the pose, you don't want to pull too much your feet, the aim is not to get your feet over your head, but the aim is to really keep the feet as low as possible so that you really feel it into the hips as you try to get your knees out to the side, which happens a little bit more. You'll notice if you work towards pressing the sole of the feet together. Shoulders are relaxed, neck is long. And we take a few more deep breaths. So you're still breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. And you don't want to force too much. So 
so that the breath starts to be a little bit short or compromised. You want to be able to be into a pose where the breath is slow, soft, and deep. It just feels comfortable. On your next exhale, see how you do. You can lift your head up and now see if you can start bringing your toes towards your head. Still trying to bring your knees out to the side as much as possible. If you can go maybe a little bit further, you can start bringing your feet over your head. Maybe but even further, but watch your back, watch your hips. This is a deep stretch for the hips. Those who are able to get their feet behind their head, I can't see it, but make sure that you can undo it. <laughs> Otherwise, you might get stuck at home. Nice and slow, releasing your head down first, releasing the grip of your hands. You stretch your legs forward. Very good effort. Ah, maybe just wiggling your hips from side to side. Just really feel into the hips, that opening. Nice and slow, you can bring your knees to your chest, maybe giving yourself a good hug. You can either roll onto the side to come up to a seat or maybe rocking back and forth. If you feel you can take it, this is a good massage for the lower back. Maybe still going further if you don't have any um, back issues at the moment and maybe coming up, maybe straight into Navasana, we'll just do a little core work. If you are seated, you can start with your feet on the floor, hands on the floor. You want to be lifting your legs to parallel to the floor. If you can go further, maybe you can get hold of your knees and you want to keep pulling your heart forward. So spine is straight as much as possible, really engaging the core. If you can go further, arms out. Maybe still going further, you can straighten your legs. A bit hard, early morning, but keep going. Still breathing deeply in through the nose, out through the nose. Nice and slow, we release. Coming back to what we did before, a little different, sort of the feet together. Again, you want to try to work towards heels close to your perineum region, and you can. Maybe work with the breath a little bit if you want to flutter your wings, bring your knees down so you can take a knee inhale, knees up, exhale out the nose as you bring your knees down. And maybe you keep going like this, just like we did, kind of Kapalbati. Uh, don't worry too much about the inhale, but just sort of exhale down, exhale down. Spine is straight, shoulders relaxed. So this really activates some energy in the adrenal region, moving the energy from the lower chakras upwards. Nice and slow, you can release and we come onto our abdomen to strengthen the lower back. Very important not to forget this part of the core. So chin on the ground, you can bring your feet to touch, big toes to touch together, hands are stretched back, palms facing upwards. And we'll start with Shalabhasana. Exhaling your breath as you inhale. Using your back muscles, you can lift your legs, your arms, your chest. And today, because it's the energy of water of the moon, we'll go swimming maybe a little bit. So see how you go. If you can keep lifting your chest and bringing your arms forward, touching your palms together as you inhale. And then as you exhale, you reach your palms back. Keep lifting your chest. Inhale, coming forward. Exhale. Ideally, no bending to the knees. You keep lifting the legs as much as possible. Keep working with the breath, 
Inhale. Stretching your arms. Exhale. If not, you can stay with your chin on the ground. Easier version. We're going for a couple more breaths. One more. Exhale, you reach back and you relax. Oh, turning your head one way. Spreading your feet. Mat distance. Bringing your heels in, toes out. Makarasana. Maybe even overlapping your hands over your head. Just taking a few breaths. Relaxing completely. And then bringing your hands under your shoulders. You can keep your feet uh, nice and wide if you want to keep your knees together. Otherwise, bringing your toes together and we stretch back into Balasana. So, a couple of options for Balasana. As I mentioned, just like the first asana that we did, you can keep your knees together, bringing your arms back so you get more stretch into your shoulders as you relax your shoulders. Otherwise, you can take it with your knees nice and wide apart to allow for the chest to rest further down, forehead to the floor, in which case you keep your arms stretched forward. So, if you want to keep your tailbone going back towards your heels. This is a very beautiful pose, especially for the evening. If you've had a bit of a long day, either sitting or doing a lot of standing, walking, and the lower back is a little bit stiff, this is really good to relax the nervous system, start to turn inwards at the same time as stretching the whole spine as you keep pushing your hips back to your hips so you might even sort of help a little bit with your hands kind of pushing with your hands so that you feel that stretch and then really trying to keep your butt sticking to your heels you start reaching forward further with your hands so see if you can maybe even slightly lift your forehead and place your forehead slightly forward so you just want to be feeling sort of from the middle of the spine so shoulder blades, shoulders, reaching a little bit further forward, feeling that stretch. And we'll take just one more breath. And as you inhale nice and slow, you can come up, walking your hands back, knees together, tucking your toes under and removing straight into <coughs> Utkatasana. So you can keep your feet slightly apart or toes together, doesn't matter what's important is to keep your feet nice and parallel. And you can bend into your knees for Utkatasana, chair pose, reaching your arms up. So just do what you can with this one. Uh, if your arms are there, that's fine. Just keep working towards reaching your hands up as much as possible. So you want to be feeling it into the shoulders. Knees are bent. You want to be bringing your weight back into the hips, into the heels as much as possible. You reach your arms up, so arms are nice and straight. So try not to bend the elbows as much as possible. So you're going to be reaching with your fingertips. So you straighten into your elbows, and at the same time, you reach up. So that means you really want to relax into your shoulder blades. And you can keep smiling. Always love this pose. Just getting a bit of strength happening into the legs. Very good for the posture, for the back. So you're working towards bringing your arms as far back as possible, but not hunching into the shoulders. Nice and slow as you exhale, you come up and you release. Oh. Very good effort. So we just take a few uh, standing postures. Before we go onto the floor, reaching your arms up, you can interlace your fingers, bringing your fingertips, index fingers to point up. So we're going into Chandrasana. Leaning to the left as you exhale, pushing your hips out to the right. So you want to make sure that you're not dropping your right shoulder down. So this should look like this. So not dropping your right shoulder down, but keeping your shoulders 
nice and stacked, just like if you wanted to look up at the sky and you lean to the left as you continue to push your hips out to the right. Deep breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. So you don't want to go too far with this one, especially if you have like bulge disc or things in the lower back. It's good to stretch into that side body, but again, you don't want to go too deep. Nice and slow, you inhale to center. Exhale, we take the other side. So breathing deeply in through the nose, into that whole left side. And as you exhale, see if you can relax on that right side. So just leaning your ribs to sort of kiss each other. Give a bit of love, one more breath. Nice and slow as you inhale, you come up. Staying at the back of your mat, releasing your hands, the mascara position, very good effort. So we'll take one more <coughs> standing posture. Stepping your left foot forward. So pretty wide stance. If you have tight hips, maybe you just shorten the stance, do what you can. Back foot is 90 degree angle. Ideally you want your back arch aligned with your front heel and you can start bringing your hands in prayer position in front of you. As you inhale, feeling the opening of the body, so feeling that right hip going back so that it goes aligned with the whole body, you stretch your arms out, so you should be feeling your shoulders right over your hips, so there's no leaning forward. Extending the arms, relaxing into the shoulders, and you can keep bending into your front knee as much as needed, so maybe adjusting your stance, you can keep moving your foot forward, if you feel you can go for further, so ideally over time we're working towards getting that front thigh parallel to the floor, so you should be feeling a good stretch here, and again you want to make sure that you rotate that right hip back, so the whole body is aligned on the axis of the mat, and for that you will be thinking of rolling your front thigh outwards, so making sure that the front knee is right above the ankle, we have a tendency often to get the knee in because hips are a bit tight, so you're going to open that as much as possible, so knee right above your ankle, and you should be feeling that as your knee moves over the ankle, the hip starts to go out a bit, trying to help also maybe with getting that back hip to go back a bit more, so really opening into the front, the inside of the legs. We'll take one more breath, so still breathing deeply in through the nose, out through the nose. Nice and slow, you inhale, you can straighten your front leg, and you step forward. Hands in prayer position, very good effort. Walking to the back of your mat, we'll take the other side, stepping your right leg forward, so see if you can get the same stance that you had before, promoting symmetry into the body. Again, back foot is 90 degree angle. Hands in prayer position, inhale, stretching your arms and just really feel that opening of the chest, the hips, exhale, starting to bend into your front knee, pay attention on that front knee, just notice what happens in the body, maybe this side is a little bit different, so see if you can really notice in terms of maybe the hips, especially what happens from one side to the other, You're still trying to get this alignment. So that knee moving right above your ankle so that the hip is opening to the front or the hip is going back. You keep pressing onto the outside edge of your back foot so nice and strong into your legs. The leg, back leg is nice and straight. And see if you can lift from your inner arch to the inside of the leg. So you want to be thinking of softening down but at the same time your legs are nice and active just like if you wanted to squish bring the mat together heel to heel, so you should be feeling an activation on the inside of the legs, arms are stretched nice and strong, extended but relaxed into the shoulders, and you can keep looking forward, breathing deeply in through the nose, out through the nose. We'll take one more breath. Inhale, straightening your front leg. Exhale, you can step forward, hands in prayer position, very good effort. 
nice and slow, we're going to come down on our knees. So we're going to finish off with a pranayam, so you can already maybe use your blanket if you need to cover yourself or use it to sit, use your block to sit. Again, just like I mentioned at the start, Vajrasana, cross-legged position, whatever works for you. And just relaxing for a moment, letting the breath soften, notice what you feel in the body, maybe also your mind, any judgment of what happened or how it felt in your body. And we'll go into just a quick Anulam Vilam, as I mentioned, uh, the breath, very important. So what's probably most important in terms of um, healing for chronic pain is really to work on the nervous system and there's probably in my opinion the best two, uh, Kapalbati which we did before at the start, very important especially in the morning and beautiful uh, Anulam Vilam alternate nostril breathing is just something that we should do at least the very least five minutes every day. This is just amazing for the nervous system, right against um, anxiety, depression, so if you have any sort of attack, you'll feel it straight away, five minutes of alternate nostril breathing, clears that out, and on the long term, the effect of, on the nervous system is just amazing. Um, you, you'll notice if you practice for a few months that you start, because it's actually changing your, your brain, your chemistry in your body, you start to really approach uh, any events very differently and you feel that you're a lot more relaxed um, with whatever comes your way. So let's get onto it quickly, just an easy version. With your left hand you can take the Gyan Mudra, index and thumb lightly touching together, other fingers straight, relaxing your hand on your lap. With your right hand, which you bring up to your shoulder, you close your second and third finger into a fist, a bit closer, so that you can block your right nostril with your thumb, so just a gentle pressure, just to uh, prevent the air from going in and out the right nostril, and then you inhale through your left nostril, so easy version, we count to four, three, four, and then we switch, no breath retention for now, Blocking your left nostril with your ring finger and you exhale out the right nostril, still counting to four. Again, no breath retention. Once you've got four, you inhale back up the right nostril, so you're still blocking your left nostril, inhaling back up the right nostril, still counting to four, three, four, and you can again switch, block your right nostril, you exhale out the left nostril to complete your, la your first round and you go back into your second round inhaling through the left nostril, we're still counting to four just nice and easy if you know a different ratio switching, exhaling, you can do a different ratio otherwise if you are new to this just allowing for the body, the nervous system to get used to the breath. We go nice and easy without breath retention. Once you have practiced for a few weeks, then you can go maybe a little bit deeper. See if you can keep your eyes closed. We'll just do maybe one more round. This is just to show you that beautiful breath which you should be doing five minutes every day. So you can do this anytime, you don't need to get on your mat for now and do a practice if you have maybe just, you know, a um, few minutes during the day before lunch, before dinner, you can do this. Entering or finishing your last round, keeping your eyes closed once you finish your last round, you can relax your right hand with also, also the Gyan Mudra index and thumb lightly touching together on your lap. 
and just feel that for a moment. So we haven't gone for too long, as I said. You want to be practicing that for five minutes. I'm just showing you one of the most amazing techniques that had tremendous effect on my nervous system, helping with all these chronic back issues. Just like you brush your teeth every day, one, two, or even three times for a few minutes. Anum Vinom, this breath is a healthy maintenance habit for the nervous system, which is really worked to the max with our lifestyles, maybe even more these days. So this is paramount. You should practice it every day. You will feel so much better for it. So if you can keep your eyes closed and nice and slow, you can come onto your back for a few minutes of Shavasana to relax completely. Trying to keep that relaxation, softness in the body so you move nice and slow onto your back so that you don't do any jarring, any activation of the muscles, just nice and easy, maybe covering yourself. If you feel you need to stay warm, if it's a bit cold this morning, just so that you can really relax completely with your eyes closed. You really want to find a comfortable pose with your eyes closed to keep feeling deep within. Maybe you can feel muscles around the spine. Maybe you can even feel your nerves, different parts of the spine. Any of those nerves relax maybe a bit further as you exhale. Many in your exhale be soft and long. Maybe even exhaling a little bit more, just that little bit more when you think that you don't have anything more to exhale. See if you can get maybe a little bit more out. Just really lengthen the exhale. And then just letting the air come back in naturally. long exhale, noticing the softening of the shoulders, the whole spine all the way down to your hips. usual, if you want to stay a little bit longer in your Shavasana, you're most welcome, otherwise you can start to get little movement happening into your toes, fingers, 
Starting to deepen the breath in through the nose, into your belly. As you exhale, you can roll over to your left side, taking a couple of breath in a fetal position. So with your knees bent, maybe resting your head on your arm. And when you feel ready, pressing your hands into the earth. You can come to a comfortable seat. Bring your hands in front of your heart, palms to touch in the Anjali Mudra. Feeling that breath at the heart center. Just taking a moment to notice how you feel deep within your body, from the vibrations, the breathing, the stretches, the activation of the energy throughout the body, the spine, and at the same time, relaxation of the nervous system. So we really bring a complete holistic balance in the body, energy, working with all the fluid activating into the body, but at the same time, calming the nervous system. So you really bring everything in balance there. Keep up the thumbs to the third eye and we bow in gratitude to the divine light that surrounds us and is within us. Hari Om Tat Sat. Peace, love and light. So I hope this helps for the back that everyone is feeling nice and um, energized, opened, relaxed. Uh, as I mentioned before, Anurum Vilog, alternate nostril breathing, so this is something that you want to do uh, every day if you can stick to it. I promise over a few uh, months, two, three months, you will feel a great, great difference. Until next week, you have a great day, great weekend. Uh, see you Monday for Vinyasa. We're probably going to start uh, a little bit earlier and move the classes to uh, maybe 7 a.m. I'm not sure we'll work that out and um, let you know. Um, posting on Facebook, sending emails, whatever, but it's probably going to be closer to 7, I think, since people are returning to work. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you Monday for a vinyasa, a little bit more movement, something a little bit different. If you have back issues, you can try, but um, it might be a little bit stronger. All right, here we go. How do we go? Thank you.